So Peter, the last time we got to play together was here at the Long Center, where we're sitting right now, and you were conducting the Austin Symphony Orchestra uh, with Pepe Romero uh, uh, playing the Iran West Concerto and the LA Guitar Quartet as well playing a new concerto by Sergio Assad. And what we're talking about today is Austin Pictures, which is on October 1st, and it's going to be a very different kind of an ensemble. Um, Quite you, different. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we have uh, something on order of 125 to 150 young guitar players. That's pretty playing, amazing. Uh, playing with the Miro String Quartet. And so. Um, uh, what's that going to be like? Are, are you used to working with lots of youngsters like that? Is this uh, new yeah, I have worked with youngsters before, and one of my first jobs was as the music director of a youth orchestra just outside Washington, D.C. But they were all playing orchestral instruments. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I've never worked with a massed group of guitarists before, so this will be a brand new experience for me. And, and the piece, Austin Pictures itself, of course we've been talking with the composer, uh, but uh, uh, it's in five movements, mm -hmm. and in a way it's inspired by another piece that is the centerpiece of the whole evening. And I was going to get your thoughts on this piece because it's a piano piece originally, but it's best known as an, as an orchestral work, and that is pictures in an exhibition of Modest Mussorgsky. Is that a right. piece? Well, that's a piece I know that you've conducted recently. Yeah, and, a and few you months ago. Know, know very well. It's of course one of the great canon uh, pieces. It right? is. It's one of the most popular orchestral works uh, there uh, in the repertoire, primarily because the uh, Ravel, Maurice Ravel, who created mm. this uh, orchestration, uh, uses the orchestra so brilliantly mm. that uh, it's become an orchestral. A war Horse, so even though it wasn't right. originally written for the mm -hmm. orchestra. Mm -hmm. The piece itself is very, uh, it's a very interesting piece. It's a very touching piece, too. Um, Mussorgsky had a, a great friend in Victor Hartmann, hmm. who was an architect and a designer hmm. and a painter. And when Hartmann died, um, I think in his early years, it may mm -hmm. probably in his late 30s, mm -hmm. I believe, mm -hmm. early 40s, uh, Mussorgsky was very touched by this and very moved to sort of memorialize his friend in a very special way. So he envisioned a gallery of Mr. Hartmann's works. Wow. And the piece would be called Pictures in an Exhibition. And what makes it even more interesting is that it starts with something called a promenade. Mm. And in between, uh, not every movement, but every other movement uh, or something like that, there is a promenade as if you the viewer are walking into the gallery for the initial promenade, and then mm -hmm. after you've seen a couple of pictures or mm -hmm. uh, sketches, then you walk to the next room or whatever. So this is the linking piece of music that Mussorgsky uh, wrote mm -hmm. to connect all these. So we hear that come back through yes, the course of the work. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, it was interesting that when Ravel decided to orchestrate the piece, that he orchestrated everything except one promenade that happens right in the middle of the work. Now, why he decided not to uh, orchestrate that is sort of a mystery. So, I mean, it just has captured people's imaginations. And I have to say, it captured my imagination. Um, you know, one of my dear friends and, and, and one of the greatest guitar players I think I've ever, I've ever come across in all my years is a, a, a young man from Peru named Jorge Caballero. Mm -hmm. And when Jorge said that he was going to play the uh, arrangement by a guitarist, by, by um, Kazuhito Yamashita, mm -hmm. uh, um, in his concert program this year, it just struck me as the ideal opportunity to roll together art and, and music and uh, in our case, film as, as well in this, in this giant project that's going to be Austin Pictures. That's, it's a brilliant idea. It's an absolutely brilliant idea, and I'm, I'm glad it's going to have uh, not only um, musical meaning, because mm. you have pictures with pictures, yes. literal and yes. uh, figurative, but yes. that we have a new piece written about Austin, absolutely. You know, and absolutely. pictures of Austin yes, included it, on this program. So it's a great idea. Um, one of the most exciting parts for me about Austin Pictures is all of the young kids that are involved. We've got 11 distinguished high school visual artists that are each painting one of the 11 themes, so the 10 paintings plus the promenade. Right. Um, and uh, so we've got 11 paintings that are being created for this. We have student filmmakers that are making a documentary about those 11 kids. Yeah, it's brilliant. And, and, very and, exciting. And, and then all the kids in your orchestra. Um, I know the Austin Symphony Orchestra has been working uh, on an amazing project that's the Young Composers Concert. And I wonder right. if you'd tell us a little bit about that and maybe about just how important it is to you to get 
kids involved in, in, in art, not just as consumers with their iPods, but actually picking up instruments or picking up pens and, to compose. Well, thanks for asking about it. This will be, uh, this coming season in the, in the spring will be the second time we've held mm -hmm. this. And um, I have to give credit to Anthony Coroa, who is mm -hmm. the Austin mm -hmm. Symphony's executive director. He really felt that we should be doing something to help young Texas composers. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly uh, established composers get help from symphony orchestras all the time, but mm -hmm. what about the youngsters who are writing music? Mm -hmm. So he put sort of a, a, a statewide call out to any young composers who wanted to write things for a symphony orchestra, mm -hmm. and I, I believe he got three or four dozen mm -hmm. pieces in the mail. Mm -hmm. I mean, and most of them very well orchestrated and written, uh, mm -hmm. all done on computer, and it, it was quite astounding. Uh, the, variety of wow. styles and these young people writing and these are mostly high school students wow. and that got whittled down to I believe 12 pieces which we played on this concert mm. uh, last spring and it was a great experience not only for the orchestra itself because we had a lot of really new a lot of difficult new music wow. uh, to prepare in a short amount of time but the crowd that came to the concert mm. roaring approval mm. and mm. It, there was mm. just such a good vibe positive vibe in the hall that we knew mm. that uh, we had to continue to do this um, mm. because it really does generate great interest in music mm -hmm. and especially what it what it's like for a young composer to write for an orchestra not an easy thing what an amazing idea and and what a uh, success uh, congratulations thank on you that. We well can't wait for the next one it, <laughs> it, we were very lucky that we had great music to present and uh, we're going to be doing this every year it just seems like our uh, a role, one of, one of the highest callings that we can have in a, in a, in, when we have the ability to present art is to give a mouthpiece to the younger generation. If it's to, to give them a stage to stand upon or to, to, to sing or to play or to compose or to paint. Um, and, uh, and I am constantly amazed by the amount of talent and mm -hmm. the, 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 the unique voices that, uh, that come out when we give uh, young people that opportunity to participate. Well, absolutely. If you think about it, Mozart was five, mm. all of five, when he started to mm. write. But of course, he had to use pen and paper. <laughs> um, and now the fact that the technology is such that a, uh, a young person who has some keyboard skills can actually create an orchestral score using a computer and a keyboard has just advanced this uh, this opportunity for young composers uh, to to create things it's just um, there's something really uh, fulfilling and joyous about giving birth to these yes. new pieces and yes. as you say allowing these young people to have a chance